Okay. Okay. Um, so our project here is to um, create a new experience for the freshman common reader because we know that the freshmen don't typically read the common reader, but they still have to go through orientation and go to their discussion groups so that they can, you know, have a discussion with the other freshmen, get to meet their peers, and it's also kind of an intro to their first classes of all state. So our goal is to redesign the common reader experience so freshmen can better connect with the book and their peers despite the fact that they probably haven't read the book. And we're approaching this problem using our assigned design brief from the class, which is um, create a variety of narrative experiences based on themes in the book to engage a wider freshman audience than just those who read the book. So we started by creating an empathy summary and um, use that to glean insights from um, extreme users who were um, who were people who heavily engaged with reading and writing or whatever their particular particularistic field of interest was and um, combining our key findings with key findings from the class we decided on three um, three constraints that we would use in building our prototypes which were books need to be relatable to the person reading it physical limitations of a reader should be taken into account as it may provide opportunities to engage more people um, and everyone wants to share their story. So um, keeping those restraints in mind as well as our design brief, we started building prototypes. Um, first we started with our nine low fidelity prototypes which we tested on users and um, narrowed them down to three, which were the breakout, um, breakout game idea, the carnival, and the game show. But after we discussed it with the class, we narrowed it down even further to two. Um, which were the breakout game, so we took one suggestion from the users and we developed the Emmons walkthrough experience, which Jess is going to tell you about now. So the first prototype that we tested with our users this weekend, we're calling the Emmons Auditorium Walkthrough Experience. And um, essentially, what we're trying to do here is that as freshmen enter the convocation, there is a dead space between the uh, exterior doors of Emmons, the lobby, and then the interior doors of Emmons to get into the auditorium. So we're proposing that we create three temporary hallways from an exterior door to an interior door as the freshmen are walking in to the convocation. And each of these hallways would explore a different theme. Uh, these three themes are from the book this particular year, and we've proposed culture, food, and community as our three hallways. So the first one that we prototyped uh, just right outside here in the hallway of AJ was the community theme. And we used a chair to simulate a booth. And then we have um, an interactive space for social media, selfie picture taking at the end, which we'll talk about in a second. The three uh, places that we chose to highlight in the Muncie community specifically was downtown and First Thursday. Um, we also chose Cornerstone Center for the Arts as the second one, and Minatrista as the third. We wanted to incorporate these relevant community venues that would engage the freshmen. Um, we know from some, we know from our interviews and just from um, all of us being freshmen at some point in time, when you come to a new community, you don't always know what is happening in the community. And so if we can engage them right away with parts of the Muncie community, just as they're starting classes, we can get them engaged with those community partners earlier. Another big part of this a uh, particular prototype is some kind of engaging demonstration at each of them. So for downtown and First Thursday, uh, we would have a large uh, painting available. For Cornerstone, we would have them bring in a demonstration of whatever kind of uh, activity is happening at their place. So classes, uh, perhaps hip hop, swing dancing, martial arts, things like that. And then Minatrista, we would also have them bring in a demo of something that is happening at Minatrista, perhaps even food from a local food truck. Then we would have them, can you go back to the last picture? We would have a area set up at the end. By Minatrista, it would be like fake garden area so that we could engage the social media aspect. We created a hashtag, hashtag freshman common experience, and they can go in there and take photos and say, hey, this this is this really cool thing that we're doing. Yeah, we're real excited. <clears throat> Our second prototype that we did was for a breakout game. And these are going to have uh, challenges based on themes in the book or challenges based on actual situations 
that the characters in Funny and Farsi faced. The game would be hosted in the common rooms on the multiple floors of Wallet. And here you can see we tested a sample game with our users over the weekend. And we had them build a pizza with specific ingredients, um, but they were given the directions in a different language. So they had to figure out, how do I build this pizza? I don't understand what's going on. If they got it wrong, they had to start over. Um, We've got our pizza ingredients up here. Yes, so you can see how we actually tested that with them. Uh, this particular theme explored adapting to language barriers, which the author and her family experienced often in the book. Um, the breakout game as a whole was received very well by our users. They understood how this game was causing them to empathize with the author and the themes in the book. As for some changes that they suggested, perhaps, um, oh, this is your part. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the, the breakout game got a pretty good review from the users, um, like Jess just said. Um, the walkthrough experience also got, you know, a, a pretty warm review, um, but one thing we learned about that was that there needs to be some kind of follow-up with it. So if we tell them about events in the community, you know, it's, it's still new, they've got a lot going on, a lot to memorize. Unless we follow up with, like, um, maps of the community to remind them, like, hey, this is a cool thing you heard about. Um, and there's an event happening here, you know, next Saturday, they probably still won't be able to engage with those communities. Another problem that we heard about is um, transportation. So a lot of freshmen don't have cars, um, not that downtown is that far away, but it would be good if we could incorporate in that walkthrough experience transportation options, so we'd probably try to bring MITS into it. Um, we could send them emails, you know, on like a bi-weekly basis, um, and we know that the Ball State emails that flood your inbox every day usually get ignored. So it would have to be from somebody not on Ball State, maybe from one of the venues, maybe from um, you know the freshman common experience or something that they're used to and um, that they're not necessarily going to ignore automatically. But um, we got pretty positive feedback from the walkthrough experience as well because a lot of, I mean, even the upperclassmen that we tested don't know what goes on at Cornerstone. They're having a Halloween party coming up. They're having a really awesome music festival this weekend. And that's just stuff that is not publicized very well on campus. So I think that freshmen would be interested in hearing about those events and doing the walkthrough experience, but they just need a little bit more prodding, a little bit more follow-up. Um, let's see. Other things that we learned um, from the breakout experience, they liked that it made them feel a little uncomfortable. So they would like more games where it puts them in the shoes of a foreigner. Another idea that we talked about was um, to simulate the American commercialism experience that they experienced in the book um, would be like they're at work on a task and then maybe somebody comes in in the middle and interrupts them and says, hey, if you buy this, it'll make it easier, whether it will or not. You know, they have to use their judgment, and then that decision they make um, in that room would carry into the next room, whether they decide to spend their resources and buy the product, or if they wanted to just go on and complete the task without it. So, yeah, and um, even though it was in a different language, they said it wasn't too challenging, it was about the right the right amount of a challenge for them to engage with. And we did try it where we we told them before that we were gonna be giving the instructions in another language, and we also tried it where we didn't tell them that the instructions were gonna be in another language. It didn't really make a difference. So I think if we did go ahead and do this game, we would just um, throw them in cold and not speak English once they're in the 